there's a high level of certain despondency. And when you take the, your key macroeconomic indicators, they are worse of example, policy rates, crime rates, exchange rate, and your rate of depreciation. When you get to a level where all these indicators are in the negative, it is said that the economy is, is in a stagnated situation. Mm. When you get to such a situation, you don't burden the citizenry. Because you need the citizens to have some level of confidence in the economy to help you rebuild the economy. But if I look at the highlight of the 2023, I have some few reservations to make. One is VAT. VAT has been increased from 12.5% to 15%. Mm -hmm. The simple implication to ordinary person on the street is that cost of living will then will be higher going forward. Because VAT has an implication, negative impact on cost of production. So once it's gone up by 2.5 marginal increment, cost of production by manufacturers, even wholesalers, retailers also go up. Mm -hmm. So consequentially, the price of goods and services in the market will also shoot up finally. In my carnival, there is not the time to increase VATs. There is even the time to lower VATs so that the citizen can be cushioned. Second is yield levy. Government has scrapped off the bracket of yield levy and reduced the the percentage of charge so right now instead of 1.5 it's been reduced to one percent however yield levy is a regressive tax and a regressive tax simply by you tax the poor more but the rich gets to benefit now if you take yield levy if you go to my community my village where i come from a lot of the people who do momo are the poor because meanwhile when yield levy was being introduced Ghanaians were made to believe that any amount between 160 to 100 Ghana is exempted. Mm -hmm. In the 2023 budget, there's no exemption in yearly Momo transaction. So any amount anybody sends is taxable. One city said. Well, it's taxable. Because the negative implication is that you have a lot of the poor people who will send between one city to 100 Ghana. So this makes yearly levy in a current form negatively regressive, meaning that it will tend to punish the extreme poor. Because to be the extreme poor who will be sending 100 Ghana, if you take a minister, DC, MD of a company, they will be sending between 1,000 Ghana, 5,000 Ghana. But the one who will be sending 100 Ghana, when DC levy applies. So in my candid view, I think that government should still maintain their treasure because any tax bracket might cushion the poor. But in this particular flattening of the 1% goes against the webbing of the poor people in so this you're society. you're happy for the 1%, but you think... I'm happy for the 1%. The, the, the threshold trap, I mean. Exactly. Even on this show, mm -hmm. let me give you Uganda. Uganda started from 0 .0 0 0.023 when they were starting the year levy system. And now they've increased it to a trade. People are not even feeling the heat of the year levy. I propose on this show that government must do what you call a start on the low bracket note. Maybe 0.3%. Then as the years go by, you keep on toppling up to even you get 1%. If you are bringing an aggressive tax and you make the percentage so high, people will then either avoid or evade it. In either way, the, the amount you hope to realize from the tax component will not be materialized. The third one is a freeze on public and civil service employment. There is a time that the city will be have been expecting a cushion from the government. And I, in my view, think that the government of Ghana in its negotiation with the IMF are making an attempt to implement some of the terms and conditions from the IMF. So placing a ban on civil and public service recruitment for the next one year isn't the best time. However, I think that in my view, I'm seeing the government are going to implement some of the terms and conditions that the IMF want to impose on the country. Even before the, 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 the money comes. Because they are having negotiation with them. And these are, they want them to reduce expenditure. And the best way to reduce expenditure is reduce employment. But you see, they should go the Ivory Coast and Lesotho way. Cut down on the size of your ministry. Lesotho has grown from 36 to 16. Ivory Coast from 41 to 30. Why can't you go from 120 to, let's say, 80 ministers? So if government is placing an embargo on public sector employment, I'm also calling on the reduce the size of your ministry from the overburdened one, the elephant-sized one, to something like uh, a mosquito size one. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, injunction on forest for imported items. Mm. Carve, this is a good policy, but it's a knee jerk approach. Which items are I uh, Vegetables, oil, uh, other assorted items. We use, we use forex for vegetables. 
No, government will give you the, the, the money mm. to import them. We import vegetables. Yeah, we import vegetables. Mm. We do. And oil and other consumables. Mm. What government has done now is that they've injunted forest allocation for importation of those items. Calf is a good thing. It's a good economic policy. But what are the negative consequences? Within the short term, if you have not created an environment whereby you can produce on your own, it will lead to shortage. So in the interim, what are the buffer mechanisms? Does the country have the needed system to say that if I'm in Janton Forest to import vegetable oil, etc., do we have local producers producing the same item? If the local producer cannot meet the vacuum that will be created, it will lead to shortage. And the economy, once shortage is created, price will go up and consequentially, it will lead to cost push inflation. Mm. So in my candid view, yes, it's a good policy. But do we have a buffer system to make those items available for the people to purchase? The last one is a commendation for the government. Government has scrapped all tax exemption for free zone oil and mining companies in the country. Let me commend the government on this policy. There is something some of us do believe that cap. Why should people walk from Asia, Europe, America come to Ghana under the pretext of free zone? And free zone simply means that you set up an entity in Ghana, you produce goods and services, say that you are exporting 70% to outside to bring in foreign earnings. Mm -hmm. Now, most foreign companies come under the pretext of free zone. Meanwhile, when they produce, they hardly even export 70% of their items. So they end up cheating the nation. So for the government of Ghana to come out with this noble task policy, I want to commend them. But, but as to whether it will be implemented to the core is another bone of contention. But the policy in itself is commendable. And I want to call on every Ghanaian. Let's help the government to succeed on this particular economic policy. Thank you so much, Bernard. Udru Tichi. Uh, to you now, Dr. Jinde, first of all, your prediction and then uh, your right. Well, my prediction is this. <laughs> Two one against South Korea. One time. I had a dream. Ooh. And <laughs> the dream told me that we are going to score. South Korea will score first. Okay. But we equalize and then give them two one. Thank you so much for your, my, your my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> what's on your mind? What's, what's your well, right? You see, what is on my mind? Mm -hmm. uh, Kafui, gradually, uh, um, I want to focus on police brutality okay. against citizens. Mm -hmm. You know, just this very month, mm -hmm. I watched two videos where the police were brutalized citizens to the extent that I could not believe that we are in a democracy. It brought back my mind to the terrible days of the PNDC. Mm -hmm. But I think 30 years in a democratic dispensation, should, this should not be happening. First and foremost, in case you are a police officer and you suspect that somebody has done anything wrong against the law, what you do, you arrest him and bring him to the police station, charge him for whatever offense you believe or think he has committed. Mm -hmm. But the last video that I watched, Describe two it. policemen mm -hmm. pulled down a young man who was screaming for breath, crying, trying to tell them, let me get up and I'll explain. And they were kicking him while he was on the ground. This is what the law says. In case you arrest somebody, uh, Bernard, you have your constitution here. Yeah, I have it here. Yeah. At, read Article 19 for me. Article 19, Clause 2C. It tells you. All the stuff is in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I teach law, so. <laughs> Article 19, okay. Clause 2C. Okay. What a does it say? A person charged with a criminal offense shall, see, right? Yes. He's presumed to be innocent until his proof or has pleaded guilty. Good. This is an important legal principle, presumption of innocence. Mm -hmm. Unless a competent court of law proved that that young man is guilty. You, the police officer, have no right to pronounce his guilt. So by kicking him, knocking him, you are imposing your own penalties. You are punishing him before even you, 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 before bringing him to court. Secondly, you allege that he is in possession of a substance you believe to be a uh, banned substance. Mm -hmm. In the first place, you've not proven that. Maybe that substance that you believe he's holding, which you think it is a, 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 a banned substance, Contumery. or it, yeah, it could be anything. Yes. So you have to send it to a lab for the lab to prove that this is what you suspect it is weed or it is whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be contumery or cooker, dried ones. Okay. So if it turns out to be contumery or cooker, then what happens to you? And in case uh, you 
attempt arresting somebody and he resists, the law requires you to use minimum force. The man was also already on the ground. Mm -hmm. At that moment, he does not pose a threat to the police. So why do you continue to kick him? You see, all these things, we as citizens, we must begin to talk against some of these things. Let me read you a police uh, statement on that particular case of that guy who was, uh, who was seen to be uh, being manhandled mm -hmm. by the police. Yeah. So uh, it happened at Asankragua. Asankragua in the, the eastern region. So yeah. the police have commenced investigation into a viral video in which two police officers are seen struggling with a member of the public and assaulting him in the process. Assist the investigation. The matter is being handled by the Police Professionals Standards Bureau. <clears throat> and then the officers involved, Inspector Prince Iwa and General Corporal John Ahiamata, both with the divisional MTTD as a Gregor, have been referred to the Bureau to be taken through the due process of the law. No, that is not enough. It's not enough? That is not enough. I have some, I, I've had some experience with the professional Police Professional Bureau. Mm. When you get there, sometimes they don't take you serious. Oh, how do you mean? Yeah, I've, I've, I've interacted with them. I went with uh, a, a, a report against their, their colleague in Kintampo, mm -hmm. and they did not even take me serious. They tried to be very dismissive. Mm. So I don't think any good will come out of that. So what I expect the IGP to do, what they've done is purely aggravated, uh, 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 aggravated assault. Mm -hmm. So they should charge them, let them sit aside. They can do their own internal investigation, the administrative process, but the criminal aspect must be taken care of. Kafui, if you go out there now, they did. You'll be before court today. Do you know that uh, further to this particular issue, the guy has come out to say that he was not being beaten, contrary to what we saw. Well, what, what do you make of that? Well, if he, if he's, he's, he, you see, in criminal law, mm -hmm. any offense that you commit is not against the individual; mm -hmm. it's against the state. Mm -hmm. So that when we prosecute you before the court, the state will invite you as a witness. Mm. Because the offense is not against the individual, although he's the victim. Mm -hmm. But the offense is against the state because the state has forbidden this act. So if the witness, the main witness, he's now denying. But if the witness can deny, then we have video evidence. Mm. Uh, we can testify to that. Mm. We can do forensic uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 examination this, to this, see whether it was uh, actually yeah. uh, he was hit or he was. Yeah. But everybody saw it. Yeah. No of him saying the police did not assault him. So, <laughs> what no, is no, that? no. He, he he does not define what an assault is. Okay, all right. There's a legal definition of assault. Okay. So what I think we should be doing now, the police, they they need to do more training, especially in terms of uh, taking them through the criminal procedure mm. in case I arrest somebody. What? It, what are the legal requirements? What do I have to do? Mm -hmm. If you are not doing it, please, they should introduce it. And mm -hmm. some of us are prepared to come and teach it pro bono. Thank you very much. At so the police college. This is the video you're talking about, of the chap who was uh, being manhandled by these two officers who have been named by the Ghana police. Um, it happened at Sankragua in the eastern region. And so, uh, yeah, so this was what was going on. Mm -hmm. It was being uh, punched. Mm -hmm. But the guy said he wasn't being beaten. See? Yeah. So this Two of you, you've overpowered him. Mm. At that moment, you've disabled him. Mm. So you don't need to punch anymore. <laughs> okay, so, 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 so that's your rant. That's my rant. Police brutality. Police brutality. Okay, and then uh, Bernard talked about the, the budget. Before I, I fly through today's headlines, uh, let me just uh, give you great news about money. So if you need a quick loan to pay for school fees, and any other emergencies you want to be talking to Fido, they have great news for you. And we'll be talking to them later on today's show. So Fido has extended the minimum maximum loan amount. It's now at 2,500 Ghana CDs. What you need to do, you start with 200 for your first loan. You pay on time, then you get higher loans, up to 2,500 Ghana CDs. What you need to do is download the Fido app from the Google Play Store. You can get a quick Fido loan in just 15 minutes right on your phone. You need your Ghana card and a mobile money wallet to apply. And there's an alert, you know, Christmas is a few preaching and the fraudsters descend from wherever they are based to come and try and take money from your, 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 your account. Be aware of fraudsters. Fido doesn't have any agents. They don't ask you to pay money before you get a Fido loan, which is money. You know, any, anyone who asks you for that kind of money is a scammer. You want to report the person to the police. How do you get the Fido loan? You want to dial star 711 star 5555 hash star 711 star 5555 hash. 
apply right now or download the free Fido app directly from the Google Play Store. Okay, those of you who are answering questions for our uh, cheesy pizza quiz, yes, answer them on our Facebook, our Instagram, and our Twitter. Look for GTV Ghana and follow, all right? Don't answer on WhatsApp because the WhatsApp answers will not take you anywhere at all. Okay, all righty. So the the headlines that I want to pass take you through. Uh, let's start with the Daily Graphic. Um, gold for oil. Mining firms directed to sell 20% for petroleum. That's a big headline in today's Daily Graphic. Uh, Ghana wins appeal in Norway case. Picture there of a smiling attorney general. Stop Korea as Black Stars play today. Just Palm is partnering at some Thai companies for rice production. And those are your headlines in today's Daily Graphic. Ofriata responds to grounds for motion of censure, page 32 in today's Daily Graphic. Ghanaian Times, uh, still on the Gold for Oil program. Bank of Ghana to buy 20% refined gold from mining companies for purchase of oil for Ghanaian market. That's a big headline there. Um, police nab suspected robber for killing a cop is on page 3. The, the Just Pong headline is still there. Rice, and uh, signing a deal with Thailand Exim Bank and major industry players. Uh, the vice president has launched a $450 million multi-country credit facility to address socio-economic challenges in northern Ghana. And yeah, so that Norway case involved the Oslo Chancery um, of Ghana. And there's a building case involved there. Norway has dismissed an appeal against Ghana. So that should be some good news right there. Government introduces engineering program for SHS non-science. And the world's longest serving president gets, get this, a sixth term sixth term of office. His name is uh, <laughs> Umar. Uh, no, um, he, so he's actually Equatorial Guinea President Teodoro Obiang Mbasogo. He secured 95% of the votes. Fantastic. <coughs> what an election. So yeah, he's in term. How old is he now? He's, he's, he's 80. So he's going again for another, another term. Uh, we wish him well. The Finder, headlines, 2023 budget, you start to drive job creation um, as 10 billion CD initiative targets 1 million jobs in three years. Uh, there's some job creation going on here. 500 prisons office assistants begin training. And uh, Otto Ado has a headache and Panadol cannot help him. His headache is that he has too many people to choose for, for today's game. So that's the kind of headache that any coach wants to have. So uh, we wish him well on that. Okay, um, okay. Asen Kregora is actually a western region, not, not eastern region, western. I thought it was eastern region. No, no, no. As, Asen Kregora, okay, yeah, yes, I thought of yes, Asamankese. Yeah, yeah. So ah, it sounds the same. Yeah, okay. yeah, so it's western region. We are getting our geography right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a national platform. We have yeah. to, and we make it, we get it wrong Definitely. sometimes. So when we, we, we beg you, Asen Kregora, we haven't moved you to the eastern region. You are still in western region. Okay, all right, so... Um, there's some budget. There's some budget news here that I want to talk about. So, page two of today's finder on the budget notes. So, you start. It's a program that the finance minister has been talking about for a long time, and according to him, in the budget, um, despite a freeze on public sector employment that you were talking about, they plan to create jobs through full scale implementation of the You Start um, program. It was piloted in February 2022, involving 85 young entrepreneurs. It's looking at growing startups, uh, focusing on ICT, poultry, textiles, agro-processing, food processing. And uh, so there's 10 billion CDs that is going to be committed by government over the next three years. Uh, it's part of the Ghana Cares Oba Tampa program. Okay. Um, your thoughts on that, uh, Dr. Jinde? You see, uh, I think uh, youth unemployment is a very serious challenge. Mm -hmm. It has very serious security implications. So whatever we can do to create some of these avenues for our young men and women to get some employment, whether in public or in private, mm -hmm. I think we should uh, encourage that. But I have a problem. This youth that I don't see in practical terms how more public education, synthesization, who qualifies, where to apply, what to do. There's a lot of information deficit. Let me give you some information and then we'll take it up from there. So, um, targeted at youth aged between 18 and 40, okay? It, was, it has been benchmarked against successful similar models in the world, including the Small Business Administration in the US and the British Business Bank in the UK. And so what is going to happen is that 
soft loans will be available between 10,000 CDs and 50,000 CDs. Those are the soft loans. And then you have standard loan packages ranging between 100,000 and 500,000 CDs. 13 banks have joined uh, the U-Start with, uh, so you have a spread of 10 billion. There's going to be no collateral for the loan. All right. And so the conditions for accessing the scheme includes existing businesses whose prime movers are between 18 and 40. You have to prove that your employees are contributing to SNIT and that 50% of your employees are between 18 and 40. Okay. So those are the, the 40 soft loans between 10,000 and 50,000. 50, you have standard pack loan packages between 100,000 and 500,000. There's going to be no collateral to access any program. And, the, uh, and so, so yeah, if somebody, somebody says bring collateral, they are going against the new start principle. Kafu, all these are very good ideas, sir. Mm -hmm. Very, very laudable. But I have a question here. That is new start. So in case, at my age, I employ about six or seven people who are between the ages of 18, 40. Do I qualify? Because it is defined as new start. Mm -hmm. So do I fall within the bracket? You have, to be between, you have to be between 18 and 40. You, you're the prime mover, you're not between 18. You're more than 40, so you're not... You're not so, so you don't qualify? Yes. So these are some of the things we want government to come out and explain. Okay. Let, let, let me get some, some context also on this. Uh, let's speak to Associate Professor at the Department of Finance, University of Ghana Business School, Professor Lord Mensah, on this issue. He's joining us via Zoom. Uh, Professor, good morning. Welcome to the show. Hello, Professor Lord Mensah. Can you hear me? I think the Zoom had a long weekend. Still resting. Yeah, Zoom, Zoom is still resting. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Zoom, when, when you wake up, we need you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, continue. So, I think uh, these are very laudable programs, eh? but uh, I think they, we need more public education. Mm. We need more public education and centralization. That a key issue. I mean, getting people to understand these things because public education. You think we are, there's a deficit there in some yeah, of these I think so. great programs? Yeah, YouTube, I think so paper. because. Uh, I was talking to some young men and women in Kintampo, and then they, I mentioned this thing because I also heard about it. I read a lot about it, but they seem not to even be aware mm. of these things. And if we are to implement it and implement it well, I think we should try as much as possible to uh, depolitize it. We should look at it as a Ghanaian agenda where everybody will be included. And I don't think, I'm not saying that is the situation. I'm saying we should avoid the temptation to politicize it. Mm -hmm. If we do that, it means uh, we are thinking in terms of Ghana, in terms of the bigger national interest instead of our own uh, uh, party cronies or supporters. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that is happening, but I'm only cautioning that we should avoid that. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Bernard, your thoughts on you <coughs> yes. start? Yes. Uh, let me first pick on paragraph 89 of the 2023 budget statement. Mm -hmm. And it talks about development bank Ghana. And government is proposing to commit 500 billion special credit program to local industry place with focus on poultry, rice, uh, cereal, pharmaceutical, tourism, textile, government, blah, 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 blah. Kav, let me bring in the youth as compared to this one. Kav, mm -hmm. per my Working experience with the Commonwealth on youth entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. The way government is going about this whole youth start is wrong. Tell me what is how. And I wish, right. I wish they have a real look at how they are going about it. Calf, if you are suffering from stomach ache mm -hmm. and you go buy paracetamol, are you treating your stomach ache? I'm buying paracetamol. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, a patient suffering, is suffering from stomach ache. And he goes out to buy paracetamol. Would that cure the stomach aches? The answer is a big no. Look, why would the finance ministry become the implementing agency for you start? So even from the word go, the premise, the vehicle to implement you start is totally wrong. Who should be implementing it? Well, well let, 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 let me give you some. So, so listen. So implement agencies of you start sorry uh, my, my apologies i should have given you this information so the ghana enterprises agency it used to be called uh, national board for small mbss yes so the ghana enterprises agency and the national entrepreneurship and innovation program 
um, are the implementing agencies of the program. And so they, they want to create um, a wealthy, inclusive, sustainable, empowered, and resilient societies. Wiser, W for wealthy, I for inclusive, sustainable for uh, S for sustainable, E for empowered, R for res uh, resilient. And it will be supported by the National Youth Authority, mm -hmm. the Ghana Technical and Vocational Education and Training Service, and the National Builders called NAPCO. So it's the GEA with the NEIP supported by the National Youth Authority, the Ghana Technical and Vocational Education Training Service, TVET Service, and the Nation, 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 Nation Builders called NAPCO. So okay. these are the Carl, implementing and supporting agencies. The import and the cracks mm -hmm. of youth tax is two things. Trade and industrialization. Mm. All that the government is seeking to do is to create an industrialized country called Ghana. Isn't that the, isn't that the case? Mm -hmm. God being so good, you have Ministry for Trade and Industry. And Kav, if there is any minister in Africa, not even Ghana, who has shown competency and prowess in industrialization, I'll give it to Alan Chamantin. Mm -hmm. And his records are there. Let's put policies in the dustbin and focus on his competency, his core competency. I mean, there is a man from World Trade Organization through all MPTEC and all the things he has done. He has shown that when given the needed environment, he can lead that charge. Kav, why do you take your stats? Take it to GEA, mm -hmm. take it to NYA, take it to NIP, at the expense of the ministry. And then again, Kav. You have the National Entrepreneurial Innovation Program, NIP, and more, more like uh, competitive organizations. Can go back and look at when NIP started. NIP started as Yes Fund, mm -hmm. and it was transitioned to NIP. So why then to build the capacity of NIP and give them these resources? And look like we are always creating an overlapping agencies and organizations all in the name of Sulganierism. Look, let's go and look at how Singapore did it. A tiny country. When we finish Singapore, let's go to Mauritius. Because if you are contributing 10 billion Ghana cities to this thing, the impact it should create should be more than what we can think of. Then again, Kav, then so again. The, but the models they use are like the small Kav, business administration they use in, in the US. Kav, you wait. Let me, let me finish the, my point. You'll appreciate yeah, where I'm coming yeah. from. British business bank. When this whole youth start was starting, the thinking was that people who were recruited under NAPCO, when they have exited their model, they were going to be put to be part of you start, you know, beneficiary. But let me tell you, entrepreneurship is not a game for everybody. Research has shown that if every hundred people start business, in the next five years, 90 out of the hundred will go off, remaining just 10. Out of the 10, five will go off, and in the next 10 years, it will remain only five. That should tell you that the ecosystem for entrepreneurship is not something for everybody. So if people are under NAPCO and all of a sudden you are transitioning them to become beneficiary of start, it's a wrong approach. What's the right approach? Let's have interministerial committee on youth unemployment. When government wanted to fight what we call the illegal mining, they, we created interministerial committee on illegal mining. Is that, is that a more, more layers of bureaucracy? Wait, wait. Kav, you, you let me finish. You appreciate what I'm saying. Mm. Now, every unemployment is local. Every unemployment is local. Mm -hmm. You have 261 MMDAs in Ghana. You have the local assemblies. The problem people go through, they are localized. If you go to my area, Sunyana West, and the Bono area, the people from Domai Hinkro want to get support into poultry farming. Come to Sunyana West in farming. So what the government must seek to do is to make maximum use of the local assembly system. Mm. Because every unemployment calf is local. Okay. Why would people travel from Bono than the northern regions okay, to come and populate Accra? Okay. Uh, because the opportunities are not there in their local areas. Let me bring in the gentleman that I was trying to bring in earlier. You know, Zoom is still on holiday, so we are <laughs> going by the phone. So, Associate Professor at the Department of Finance, University of Ghana Business School, Proud Ghanaian, Prof. Lord Mensa. Greetings, uh, Prof. Mensa. Yeah, uh, good morning, Tapu, and good morning to Alex. Fantastic. Let's start with you, Start. Um, it's budget 10 billion CDs available 
for young people between the age of 18 and 40 to go into business. You have soft loans ranging between 10,000 to 50,000 CDs. There are standard loan packages, 100,000 CDs to 500,000 CDs. There's no collateral for loans. 13 banks uh, are, are joining this whole program. It's going to be implemented by the Ghana Enterprises Agency, formerly NBSSI, and the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. Um, and it's supported by the National Youth Authority, Ghana Technical and Vocational Education and Training Service, and the Nation Builders Corp, which is NAPCO. It has been benchmarked against the successful models such as the Small Business Administration in the U.S. and the British Business Bank U.K. It sounds like a great idea. Don't you think so? Yes. Um, you see, when you talk about start as the name, you know, um, signifies, I mean, it's, it's a package for startups. And I thought maybe for this budget, you know, things came up like in the last budget. And I don't know what we've been able to achieve since that time in terms of, I mean, this uh, startup financing. And I asked myself, so many questions for repeating it in this budget, which I could have, I, I, if I'm the finance minister, I would have put it on freeze for now, looking at the economic hardship we're facing. Mm. Now, as the economy that is going through, I mean, this dynamics, we would say that it's not a time to finance startups because of the risky nature. And if you don't take care, the money that will be sunk in there may not be money that you realize any benefit from it. So my advice would have been that we should have targeted existing businesses rather because they have survived and they survived through different times dynamics and they understand the system very well. Not a trial moment for them. And at this time that, you know, your debt is ballooning and then even thinking about financing some of this, you know, um, I mean, policies, I mean, how to source for funding. I was coming to looking at the um, the budget deficit that was created compared to last year. You realize that the finance minister, you know, jumped our expenditure, you know, from 100 and you know um, um, 40 something, I mean, billion to 200 and you know five. And you look at yourself and you ask yourself questions like, how are we going to finance this? looking at our local environment. So you start, it is a good policy, but the timing of the policy um, implementation, should be, we should be careful on that. The allocations I'm going to do, if we don't take care, because hard times like this are not times that businesses are supposed to start. We have businesses that can start at this time of the year, but how are we going to identify them? So for me, looking at, I know as I use that, the policy is in such a way that they're going to channel the funds through the banks and all those. And, you know, the banking sector is in such a way that if funds are channeled there and they are able to identify efficient businesses at any point in time, uh, the hard times the banks struggle themselves to identify the right businesses to put money in. So I would say that Times like, you know, days are not times that we're supposed to target startups. There are times that we, we have to target existing businesses so that, you know, having the experience and all those, right. they'll be able to produce something for the government. Okay. Other than that, you know, we'll throw money out there and then it will be money that we'll, we'll not, we cannot even account for it. Okay. Business as usual, government expenditure, which does not produce any returns for the country. And so for me, I would say that we should have hold on the startup and then look at, you know, um, existing businesses rather. Okay, so Prof, thanks, thanks for your insights. Uh, we have about a minute to go briefly. How do you deal with the unemployment rate? Because I'm looking at 13.4% unemployment rate uh, for the youth in Ghana, translating into over 1.5 million out of the 11.5 million economically active, active population. You have over 30% of uh, people aged between 15 and 24 unemployed. How do you deal with the burgeoning numbers of unemployed right. youth? So, so fantastic. Um, the, the youth that will not be the solution to unemployment. I mean, for somebody to be permanently employed, the person needs to be engaged and active so the person goes on pension. Now, if you are going to use that to 
get the young ones engaged, get employed, that means you will end up throwing money in vain. Because let's look at the statistics over the years. How many startup businesses survive? You won't get more than 20% surviving if right. you go through the incubation period. However, existing businesses, which are well distributed across you know, the country, and you see, when you are creating you know, employment, don't look at employment in Accra, Kumasi, or Takrani. Right. Look at employment that will sink down to the local level. So at the end of the day, if someone is a seamstress down there, that person should be able to employ one or two people to help him show school uniforms for the secondary school over there. Instead of centralizing the school uniform that we have, distribution that we have in Accra, okay. create jobs at the local level so that people can employ. Existing businesses can employ and they are sure of what is turning out. Mm. They've gone through the dynamic. They've experienced economies like what we are having now, where interest rate is about 10 percent, inflation is about 40 percent. So they know how to turn the businesses around. Right. However, if I should base my argument on the statistics, I can tell you that you know the use that will not be you know an initiative that can employ, gainfully employ the young ones until they go on pension. All right. So let's look at. The we'll, we'll have to I'm leave it here, I'm Prof. Mensa. Completely away. Yes, indeed. But then. Um, it should be something that, you know, uh, we should think through it and the timing of implementing it, we need to look at it carefully. All right, we'll leave you here. Thank you so much, Associate Professor at the Department of Finance, University of Ghana Business School, Professor Lord Mensah, for his thoughts on uh, youth uh, job creation. Dr. Jinde, I I'll, I'll give you a, a minute or two just to comment on, on you start and how, what do you think the way forward is for getting young people employed? Well, getting young people employed is... In the right, the right scales, mm -hmm. because most of the people who are looking for jobs, you ask them, "What can you do?" He has no employable skills. So how can you get employed when you have no employable skills? Mm -hmm. So for the long term, let us focus on vocational training. Mm -hmm. Vocational training. At least, uh, if you have your own, uh, you can do your own thing. But whether you are a mason or a carpenter, okay. you don't need. You don't. Wait, you don't necessarily have to wait for youth start. All right. Because you you can easily get employed. Okay. As a mason or a carpenter. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor Anani Jinde, uh, uh, Bernardo Drew Techi. Uh, football is squeezing us seriously, and we need to coffee. go to See, Studio 5 um, uh, right now. I have to go right now. Uh, I really wish I could stay with you, but let's just go to Studio 5, take the, the, the sports update, and then we will we, we, we return. Just enough time to wish uh, Mr. Uh, 